Three. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big P here. You know, don't you? You know. Right, we've got a special guest on today. A good friend of mine, Terry. How are you doing, Terry? I don't know, Russ. Do I still count as special if I've done like three weeks in a row? <laughs> I don't know if you can be special because you got voted on Boxing Asylum last night for the value of the week for saying that Chris Eubank Jr. beats the great Carl Frost, living legend. Oh, uh, mate, you know, I, 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 wear, I wear the award with pride. <laughs> I wear that award with pride. So shout out <laughs> to the Boxing Asylum guys for remembering me. Yeah, you got voted value of the week by somebody. But uh, have you been keeping all right? Ah, oh, mate, you know, you know, still, still, still being stalked by my, my favourite fan, uh, Showtime Sonny Edwards. Showtime, yeah, oh, Sonny Edwards, uh, Rat Fink from up at Steel City Gym. Ah, teacup dog, whatever you want to call him. You know what, Russ? Who yeah. would have thought? Who would have thought the boxers would be trolling the media? <laughs> <laughs> he's a good little fighter, Sonny. We have to give him credit, but he gets a bit he is. Scary, doesn't he? So even that, he's just not very entertaining. Like he's talented. You can't question what he's won. Yeah. But he's talented, and he's a kid that's better. That his brother's better than him in every way. But look, mm. I don't want to talk too much about Sonny. I wish him all the best, and I'm sure we'll see him at some point. And then hopefully, you know, he can let us know what he thinks about us to our faces. So, you know, <laughs> not much more to say. All right, then. We'll leave it at that. Right, then. Uh, moving on, uh, I, will, I, I just want to brush over a few things before before we go balls deep on Mick Ennis' show and a couple, a couple of other issues. Now we've had, we've had time to reflect. What do you think about the situation with Dylan White, a.k.a. the body snatcher, the can man, what do you think about his situation at the moment and how he's handled being iced by uh, Povetkin, a 41-year-old old man? That he said was an old man, didn't he? His words. Do you know what? Every time I look back on that fight, Russ, I go back to... So I used to, I used to be mates... I'm, I don't know. Am I, am I still mates with him? I don't know. I was mates with a guy called Anthony Small, right? And Anthony Small and I used to spar a lot before he got radicalized and so forth, when he was just a young guy, you know, making his way in the pro ranks. So him and I used to do a lot of work. Mm. And, like, he'd hit you with punches that didn't make any sense because he knew boxing better than I did, right? And I'd mm. be like, you know, there's a time he told me, he goes, I'm going to hit you with four left hooks in a row. And I'm like, huh, are you, are you hell? And he did. Like, he set it up beautifully. He waited till I was tired, kept peppering me with the right hands, and then just threw four left hooks in a row. And... That's what the reason I say that is when you see someone like Povetkin, the level of boxing knowledge he has over Dillian, you can't even measure it. There's only so much you can do in the gym before you just have to know boxing. And yeah. Povetkin did, Dillian didn't. And that's why he got stopped. Now, would Dillian win the rematch? Maybe, because I think the worst thing that can happen to someone sometimes is you drop someone like Povetkin. I think Povetkin's a guy that you just want to outpoint. You want to win every round against him and make him feel 41 years old and then maybe try for a late stoppage. So let's see what Dillian does. I think boxing needs Dillian to win the rematch, but that's not a guarantee that he will win it. No, don't you think, no? I don't think it's a guarantee because Povetkin has those kind of tricks. And the, the issue I always had with this fight was Povetkin manages his energy, Russ, so that he doesn't use too much energy in the first half of the fight. And then he comes on stronger in the second half. Remember when he fought Huey and he was really pouring it on towards the end? Yeah. Now, Dillian's got stamina issues, right? And we've seen it in most of his fights where he struggles towards the end. You don't want to be struggling against Povetkin towards the end because you're just going to give him openings. And he's still got the power late into the fight. Mm, yeah, so you think it's a 50-50 then pretty much, do you? Uh, no, 60-40 Dillian. I think Dillian's the favourite in the rematch. Just, it's just youth. Youth, size, and... He needed Mark Tibbs in that fight. Yeah. That's the sort of fight where you needed a Mark Tibbs-type character. Just to say, mate, you dropped him, but you just get back to your boxing, just keep taking these rounds. Don't worry about stopping him, just keep taking these rounds. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Povetkin's into his 42nd year, anyway, when they fight him. I mean, what, 
I mean, how many more old men is Dillian going to be in? I mean, is this is 40 odd the new 30 odd now? I mean, it depends on your doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you say it's a 64. I, I think Dillian should all win on points. I mean, in situations like this, rematches get out, but they very rarely go how we want them to go. They usually go, they usually revert back into playing it safe, don't they? Yeah. Because you felt each other's power and all that, so you're you're a bit more conservative in your approach. Do you think he'll take the rematch? Povetkin or Dillian? Dillian. Yeah, I don't think he has a choice. It's his sixth pay per view, Terry, and he's not fought for a European title. Do you do you think that will be it's being abused pay per view? Um, hey, we're going to watch Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. on pay per view. That's oh, just no. where the world is. Uh, November. November. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, so if you think about where we're at with with all of this, right? Yeah. We we're in a media world now where people subscribe to Netflix, so most of their time is spent on Netflix. Um, we don't really, I mean, the Sky subscriptions are down and all of this sort of stuff. And so, Sky, like, how do we make more money? And the answer is make people pay for sport and, and I, I know people complain about boxing we're not far off pay-per-view football we are not far away at all yeah and do you think that's going to be like that with paying for football matches that we want to watch Terry I, I think so and the reason I say that is if you look at football the value of those TV rights will go down because basically Sky like why are we paying 4 billion now it's not worth that to us unless we can turn Liverpool v Man United, Man United v Leeds, um, Arsenal Tottenham into events where we charge customers a fiver or a tenner to watch the game from their home in full 4K or 8K, I mean, high definition. Yeah. You're just going to have Liverpool fans paying to watch their matches and, and blah, blah, blah. And the teams that are, have not got a big fan base, you know, like your Bournemouth and people like that, they're just not going to have a lot of money, are they? But I just think that's where the world's going now. Like so we're going to have the top eight what? clubs in, in the Premier League all coining it in from pay-per-view and the other 12 yeah. struggling like the rest of the teams in the country. I, I think that's where you're headed. And then it will just go into a European Super League. I think yeah. by 2030... That world that you work in, you, ob you obviously get to speak to some... I mean, I went to that place at Leeds where you were doing that, that, that seminar thing. Right? Obviously, you, you, you know about finance and, and where, where interest rates are going and all that. Where, what is happening? What is going to happen with sport now with these banks? Are they all getting frightened? So, 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 so what, happens with, what happened this year, and I, I, I can speak generally, a lot of football clubs and rugby clubs went to the banks for bridging loans, right? So they've all got these bridging loans and it's like, look, can you just pay us until the TV money comes in? And like they're charging like ten percent on some of these like five seven million that pound loans. Ten, yeah, yeah. For a commercial loan, that's loads. That's twice what you're paying with your mortgage. Yeah, so a mortgage is five percent then. Yeah, so you're basically looking at. I mean, you've got to pay these off, but then there's also the long-standing debt. Now it's getting riskier because there are no fans in the crowds. Banks are getting tetchy and saying, "Well, how are you going to pay us back if you don't get crowds through the doors?" So yeah. the banks are literally borrowing to pay off some of their existing debts. It's, if, if we're not allowed crowds, let's say there are no crowds for another year, a lot of football clubs fall over. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I think about 60 of the clubs would fall over if there were no crowds for this season. So what, what, where do you see boxing in 12 months then, Terry? Do you see, if, if there's no, if we can't get fans and do you think it'll go underground? Okay, so let's let's take um, who, who's an example of of a, of a guy who's quite handy on the small hall scene. Uh, God, this is tricky. And if only Liam Cameron was still boxing. But if you pick someone, yeah, if you pick someone like Liam Cameron, right? Liam Cameron's a small hall guy. That that's that's his bread and butter. Sell yeah. a few tickets, make a few quid if you can. Without crowds, that model's finished. So all of these guys who was fighting on Errol Johnson shows, on Steve Wood shows, is done, right? So, so now everyone's looking for the, 
for the televised or the pay-per-view shows. And there's only going to be a handful of those in any given year, Russ. And there's only a handful of slots on those because without crowds, it becomes very, very expensive unless you move everything to pay-per-view. And then mm. now, now as fans, we're like, well, I didn't mind watching so-and-so against the journeyman when it was free, but now you're going to make this happen on pay-per-view. I'm not going to watch it. So boxing is at the point where if it wants to make money, it's got to put its best people in with each other. We've got to go like the UFC where people fight each other. You win, you lose. It doesn't matter. We just dance again. Yeah. I see what I see what you mean. That's your, your take on it. That, that we can't yeah. be having knockover jobs and, and you know, like Joshua's first 15 fights. We can't be having that, can we? Because he could have beat Charles Martin in his debut, couldn't he, Joshua? Well, hey, Charles Martin's better than people give him credit for. I think he just froze on the night. I think Charles Martin's better than he fought that night. But that doesn't mean that he'd have beaten Joshua. He would, he would have just he should have just lasted longer. Mm. Yeah, yeah. All right then. Uh, moving on then. Uh, I believe you've got a list of thirty-four pay-per-view fights in the Eddie Hearn era on matching from day one. Hey Harrison. Hey, Klitschko, all the way through to White, uh, Povetkin. Uh, can we go through that list and can we go through the list and agree with which ones were worthy and which ones weren't? Because obviously, prior to that, there were fights that were not back for pay per view that, that are a lot better than what's on that list of 34, aren't they? If you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so Russ, one of the hard things with a pay per view is you got to look at how you felt when it was announced, and then you got to look at how you felt after the after the event, right? Yeah. So, so if we look at the the jewel in Eddie Hearn's crown, for yeah. me, for me, it's Frotch Groves, right? That I think, I think it's Frotch Groves number one, and then Klitschko versus Joshua number two. And the reason I say that is we didn't the most dramatic ending was in the Frotch Groves 2 fight. Like, that was just, it was decisive, it was destructive, and, do you know what I mean, like, Wembley just lost its mind. So I think that, that for me, at the time, I think we all agree that was a pay-per-view. What about the first Frotch Groves? What about, back up, back up to the, back up to the first two that he did, Hey Harrison... Hey, Klitschko. So let's start with the Hey Harris, and then we'll go through all the other 33, yeah? So, for me, Hey Harrison was never a pay-per-view because Audley was done by that point, and I'm not saying that to be disrespectful, but Audley had had his chance and it hadn't worked out for him. So Hearn was just basically recycling someone, and they were trying to convince us he was as good as David Hay. But yes, I, mean, I can! You remember that? He, he was walking out at airport, one of a load of people with Yes, I can t-shirts plowing through, media chasing him, and he's going, yes, I can, beating the drum. I remember it to this day. Do you remember at the press conference with them t-shirts? Uh, do you know what I remember about that one? I always remember David Hay going to Audley. What were you doing when you were 18, Audley? And his response was, taking money off kids like you. And I still think that's the greatest response at a press conference. He said what? So David Hay was talking about how much he'd achieved when he was a youngster. And he goes, well, what were you doing when you were 18, Audley? And Audley was like, I was taking money off kids like you, David. For what? Weed? <laughs> no, no, but you remember Audley spent time in, was it Felton Young Offenders? Felton Young Offenders, yeah, he got 18. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So, so he, was, he was known, I think he's from like Northwest London. I think he was just known. Audley was he's known as being a He's from Stone, Stone Summit, whatever it is, Arles. Stonebridge. Stonebridge, Stonebridge yeah. way. When I lived in Wembley, when I left school, I was told by my auntie, don't go around there. <laughs> uh, so, so Stonebridge, uh, and there are probably people listening from Stonebridge, someone will be in trouble, but Stonebridge is like old school Irish. It's an old school Irish stronghold. And yeah. a lot of the North London bank robbers came from that sort of area, like Stonebridge. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very, very tough area. Stonebridge, Harlesden. Yeah, you don't want to act the the idiot over there. You you won't last long. Yeah, that's why I swerved it. So I would have been served upon a plate when I in my, in my early teenage years. 
I'd have been walking around with old Patrick Stabils on or whatever I had. Patrick Keegan King. Kevin Keegan. <laughs> <laughs> I got my Patrick's took off me, wouldn't I? <laughs> uh, so basically, the first one that Eddie Hearn put on flopped and he got it banned in the UK for a few years, didn't we? We agree on that, don't we? It was horrible. So, so interesting aside, that's when I first met Eddie Hearn, Russ. Yeah. So he... He was looking for a gym for Audley to train at, right? Because obviously Audley was coming back to the UK from the States, so there was nowhere for him to train. Yeah. So they came down to Fitzroy Lodge. And he, 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 well, he came down, he popped down, and he was like, yeah, yeah, you know, we're doing the Hay Harrison thing, wondering if Audley could come and train here. So we're like, well, no, he can't, because this is where David learned to box. Like, we're not, we're not going to be used as a pawn in this game. So we tried to fob him off to this sister gym we had. It was called Lily, it was a school called Lillian Bayless, and there was like a gym in their PE hall. And so I think they trained there for a bit, mate. I mean, holes in the roof was leaking. It wasn't the greatest, but I think that's where I think that's where they made their base eventually. Mm. But that's where I first met Eddie Hearn. Mm. So that flopped. Eddie Hearn got it banned. But Sky managed to squeak a pay-per-view in Germany against Klitschko. Now, this is all on Eddie Hearn's watch. Eddie tries to make out that he had a, a little bit of something to do with that show. I don't know if he did or what, but going through these 34 pay-per-views, that's the second one, Hey Harrison. That were about his toe, wasn't it? Because he, he had a bad toe, didn't he? Uh, he would... He wasn't going to beat Klitschko that night. It didn't matter whether he had 15 toes or, or nine. It didn't matter. He wasn't going to beat Klitschko that night. Vlad, Vlad showed up prepared to take no risks and just keep David at the end of his jab. Yeah. So, so was that a good value? So let's look at it before. If someone had told you pay-per-view, Hay versus Klitschko, you'd have been like, yeah, I'll pay. Yeah, I would have said, yeah. Your initial thoughts are yes. Yeah, the spectacle I mean, David A. hyped it up, didn't he? He went and called him out in the shopping centre, grabbed him at the top of Escalator, and didn't he have a, a, a T-shirt or something? We, we, we two with the seven heads. Yeah. Seven heads. So he, he, he chased the, the promoter in him. Initially, I thought, yes, but it didn't deliver. So are we going to go in this, this debate on our initial thoughts? What we I think, think that's fair. I think it's fair. Okay, then. So... Hey Harrison, I said no to that one. Hey Klitschko, I said yes. So that's one. Right, that, that's one we've got. So that, that, the third, what's the third one? Frotch, Groves, one? No, Kessler. Frotch, Kessler, is it? Rematch. Yeah. Um, that's not a pay-per-view to me. Why, why not? Because I, th I think Kessler's one of the most overhyped names in boxing. He's, I tell you what he reminds me of. He's like a, like a David Lemieux. You know someone who, like, you wonder how they got the reputation they did. Because I don't even think, Kessler's not even as good as Pascal. But to British fans, they'd probably rate Kessler higher than Pascal, which I don't understand. Do you see what I mean? He's got a reputation, but he hasn't got the wins to back it up. Okay. Because so, he was lucky, Frotch, let's be honest, he was lucky against Frotch the first time round, right? Yeah, well, yeah, Frotch Frotch winning by two rounds, didn't he, Al Bernstein, in, in Denmark. Yeah. Nobody gets a decision in Denmark. That's why Carl Zaghi uh, pulled out of the Denmark fight and he got it switched to the UK, to Newcastle, and he got an extra half a million. Because if it goes to the judges on a Sauerland show, you're on your knees, aren't you? <laughs> you there, mate? Yeah, yeah I'm listening. So it's so okay then. So you're not you're not gonna give the the Frotch Kessler one. No, well I'm gonna give that one because I thought the first one was a good fight. So you're gonna give that what the, we've got A Harrison, a, Hey Klitschko, and, and you're not gonna give that Brian. So yeah. you'll give that, and I and I've and I'll give that. So I'm on two. You're on one. The third one, Frotch Groves one with that pay per view. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was a that was a legitimate grudge match. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So we're both going to give that then. So you're on two, Terry Ross. You're on two, and I'm on three. Right. What about Frotch Groves rematch at Wembley? We're both going to give that, aren't we? Hundred percent. Right. Ah. So Eddie Hearn now 
he's into the groove of the the money coming in because what what are the millions up to at the moment? We have there's a couple of fights we haven't got the figures in, but the other thirty two it's about six hundred and some million, isn't it? Yeah, of which of which Sky either take forty or fifty percent off the top. So that six hundred and twelve million, they're in two fights that we don't know the the, two, the last two Dylan White fights. We haven't on pay per view. We don't know the numbers for that because they're not releasing. If they're good numbers, they shout them from rooftops. If it's crap, yeah. they go quiet. So let's say we don't know about that, but it's it's possible it could be. Six hundred and fifty million in the Eddie Ernie era on Sky. That's what they've had out of the public, in it. Yeah. So it's 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 mega money, in it. And Eddie Ern's take on that is what twenty percent. No, no. So you got to do the numbers properly. It's, it's it's a bit more complicated than that, Russ. Right. So there's a pay per view pot, and I think it's called Sky Infrastructure. They they're the pay per view department, so they take forty percent off the top because basically you're using their platform. Yeah, and then you'll get some recharges as well. So you'll get Sky Sports getting some money back for their marketing costs and whatever, and you know costs of putting the show on. So I think really for the fighters and the promoter, they probably get about forty percent of the take. Right. Okay. Then. So so we've we've done the Frotch uh, Groves too. We agree on that. So I've picked four so far. Initial thoughts. No mind what it pulled on the what it did on the night initial foot, you pick three. What were after the Frotch Groves? Because Carl obviously retired, didn't he? He never fought again after that. So that was six years ago, six and a half years ago now. So since Was Brooke then, Porter was Brooke Porter pay per view, was that free to air? Uh, that was free to air. He went in he America, wasn't it? But that should have been now <laughs> that should have been pay per view. Yeah. Right, so but yeah, so after that, what were it then? Frank, Frankie Gavin against Brooke? No, Frampton. Yeah. Have you got the list in front of you? Because I, I you've can't got the you. list. I sent you it. Yeah, but that means I've got to go to my emails, Porky, and I might lose the call. Well, I, I don't know how to do it on my screen here. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Go on, man. <laughs> That's why I sent you it. Oh, Jesus! Dance glasses on and read it like that. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> so, we've gone through the first few. Yeah, so... After Frotch Grove... Oh, mate, 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 you're going to love this one. Bell UV Cleverly 2. Ah, well, that, Bob, well, when that went out, I said no, so we're not going to give that one. Cause they stunk, and and I were right, because they stunk Arena out, didn't they? But you know the, the main thing on that one? They, them two got 200 grand a piece and Eddie Earn got a million pounds. <laughs> Never throw a punch. So he wow. didn't get out that, did he, Eddie Earn? That's disgraceful. Well, a million pounds and the other two got a couple hundred grand a piece before stoppages. So that's why the promoters drive private plate Rolls Royces and the fighters. Well, we know, we know what goes on. We know, we know, you know, you know. <laughs> Bellew against Cleverly stunk stunk rotten so and what were the one after that Mayweather Pacquiao Mayweather Pacquiao two, two, two guys that are not even English right so Mayweather Pacquiao that stunk as well didn't it rotten didn't it no nah, no nah, wait wait Russ 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 Mayweather Pacquiao is is look if ever a fight was pay per view, is that one? Did you did you agree that was pay per view? I don't think there's a debate any other way. Well, I but, agreed it at first, but it's still stung. So I'll, I'll I'll agree with you on that. That I said yeah, but you know what? Why should we be having people from other countries on pay per view? I don't want to be racist or whatever, but they're not from England, and why should? No, we? Well, no, 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 Russ, hold on, hold on. You got Floyd Mayweather, one of the five greatest boxers to ever be born. You got Manny Pacquiao, one of the ten greatest ever to be born. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose I'm maybe being a bit harsh on him, aren't I? Maybe I'm being harsh. Yeah. It didn't deliver, did it? Well, it so did I because it gave us closure. Should have gone out years previous, shouldn't it? Yeah, but it gave us closure. Though. That was almost that. That was the era of the stupid money ending, like you know yeah. the. That, that that's when it all kind of ended. Okay then. So what after that? Uh, Brook Brook v Gavin. 
Brook v Gavin. Right, that should have been pay per view, should it? Terrible. Terrible. Right. So, right. So after that one, what after that? Fury v Klitschko. Yeah, you could say for that, couldn't you? But it didn't I it on the night. It was a stinker, but you, you'd give them pay per view looking at it on paper, wouldn't you? Yeah, that easily deserves pay per view. Yeah. So Tyson and Klitschko. Well, I'm gonna give them one, and obviously Tyson scored in, didn't he? What after that? Joshua versus White. British title pay per view. I I want having that at first for you. No, nah, no, nah, I didn't think that was a pay per view. Still okay. don't. Right, so we agree on that one. And what after that? Scott Quick versus Carl Frampton. It definitely was pay per view for me. It was. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you had two guys rivals that had been built up to this point, uh, prime of their careers. Like, there's, there's, there's no criticism of this fight. Like, it was a, it was a fight people wanted to see. It was two guys in their prime. There were no excuses, and fair play. They, they delivered. Right. Well, I'm going to swerve that one anyway. I'm not going to give that one. Although I thought it was a half decent fight, but initially I thought pay per view that. I thought they tried to sell it through Tesco Joe and McGuigan. So I'm not going to say I, I thought that were a good pay per view to start with. Although it were a good fight. So what after that? Uh, Joshua versus Charles Martin. John, I'm not going to say that is either. Are you? No, 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 I didn't agree with that one. What after that? Joshua versus, uh, no, Joshua versus Brazil. No, no, not having that no. one either. No chance. And what about after that? Golovkin versus Brook. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's one of Hearn's top five like moments. Like, that's the greatest build-up to a boxing bout I've ever seen. Like, that was matchroom delivering. Everything yeah. they did that week was flawless. Mm. Yeah, we'll give him that. We'll give him that. What about after that one? After Kel Brook got his face smashed in, poor child. Joshua V. Molina. No chance. Am I getting a fucking part-time school teacher age 36, 37? No way. Right. Uh, what after... Oh, this is that the one where Eddie said, Eric Molina's really up for this, Cougs. And I've got a bit of a... Squeaky bum. Well, we saw what squeaky bum did, didn't we? <laughs> so... Evening, Eddie. Right. Uh, after Molina, Joshua. Oh, Bell UV Hay won. No chance. David A. held together by seller tape and Bellew he's never beat a champion in his career, so I, I won't have it. And his two world title wins, Macabo and BJ Flores, blowjob Flores. How can you how can he be how can they have him on that thing at Matchroom's new website thing and all the greats, Ben Eubank, Bellew and all that? How, how is he on there with two title wins? And vacant belts. No, I'm not having uh, that one, no. Uh, after Bell U Hay won, what after that? Joshua Klitschko. Yes, we're going to give that one, and it delivered. Yeah, 100%. And then it's Brook v. Spence. Brook v. Spence, yes. We're going to give that one. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, what about after Kel got his face smashed in again? What after that one, then? You'll love this one, Russ. All right, get, get, go and take a deep breath. Mayweather McGregor. Is that the one where Johnny Nelson said that he can see how Conor McGregor beats Floyd Mayweather down the straight? Yeah. Good old Johnny Nelson wheeled out again. Wheel him out. Like Frank Warren wheeled Bill, Bill Ives out at that press years ago. They've got to wheel Johnny, Johnny Nelson out. And he always has to throw a curveball. Yeah, so... Yeah, McGregor... We're not going to do that one, sorry, McGregor Mayweather. So that's a no from me. Is that a no from you, Terry? No, nah, nah, I'm going to put a yes for that one. A yes for McGregor Mayweather? Yeah, I enjoyed that one. You gimp. <laughs> yeah. 10 9 to you so far. Right then, go on. What after that? Uh, Joshua Takam. Joshua Takam. Is that the one where the. Wheeled Johnny out, wheel him out, and he said that Takem 
He's like George Foreman and Evander Holyfield rolled into one, and he can see an upset. Is that that one? <laughs> Johnny sees a lot of things, Johnny, doesn't he? All you boxing fans out there, whoever Johnny Nelson goes for, you go for other guy. <laughs> right then, so I'm not going to get that one either. Uh, what after the great living legend Takam against uh, former convicted drug dealer Anthony Joshua? What about after uh, that one? Uh, you got another classic here, Joshua versus Parker. No, I'm not going to get that one either. No. Yeah, I know it's a unification and all that, but no. No, nah, no, no, so that's a no from me. And he stunk the place out, didn't he? Referee spoiled it, didn't he? Yeah. Like he did the Takam fight. Joshua's in house ref. Uh, so. Then Bell UV Hay 2. Bell UV Hay 2, no. David Hay were even in a worse position than he were at first time. A year older. We ankle trouble and all sorts. So no, I'm not. I'm not having it. Cash grab and one of the worst ever undercards on a pay per view that night. If you, if you don't mind me saying. No uh, yeah, John, yeah, John Ryder v Jamie Cox. Not a bad little fight. No, I, didn't, I thought the rest of it were garbage. <laughs> and yeah. then you got Dillian White v Joseph Parker after that. Dillian White Parker. No, that one pay-per-view, and I made a big video about it and uh, hammered it. But he ended up delivering that fight, didn't it? Well, she saw it did against Takam. Yeah, but we're going on initial thoughts. So initially, we, we that one twenty quid were it Parker against Dylan White. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. So what after that one? Uh, AJ v Povetkin. AJ versus Povetkin. Uh, no, Povetkin with 39, so no, I'm not having that. I'm not That's having a that. no for me. That's a no. Well, what, what after that one? Uh, Bellu versus Usyk. Bellu Usyk. You're going to have to give that pay for you, aren't we? Because it's Usyk, isn't it? Yeah, 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 I can see that. Usyk. But, uh, I just, I'd have paid 20 quid to see that ending, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to give Tony that one for turning up, but... Is that the one where they wheeled Johnny Nelson out and he said that Tony, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on, I'm just going to, hang on, I've got it here, I'm just going to put, I'm going to have to put this on, let me just turn my phone off because I've turned it off my phone, Terry, because I don't want anybody to spoil me, me, uh, me filming today with you, but uh, I'm going to have to play this to you now, this, uh, this Johnny Nelson 20 second uh, little quotes because I still can't get it out my head. Johnny just likes to steal the thunder on everybody's pay per view week, doesn't he? With the, with these out outlandish comments. I think Johnny's been eating been eating too much chicken and rice. Right, are you ready? Listen to this here. Uh, Right, hang on a minute. Where am I? 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 Oh, here we are. Here we are. Are you ready? Yep. Sports is underrated. He's actually a very good technical fighter. He can bang when he's actually over to. I think he's technically he's a matching better than Usyk. Technically he's a matching better than Usyk. Technically, he's a matching better than Lucic. Oh, God, that's great, that. It's nearly as good as Dave Walker against Malcolm X. <laughs> Right, uh, so they wheeled, they wheeled Johnny out again, didn't they? And, uh, and Johnny, uh, how can I say it? He delivered, didn't he, with his with his <laughs> to, to get to get the hype going. And you know, Tony's really uh, really up against it, but he'll beat this guy and all that. Look, we knew what was going to happen, didn't we? We all backed the knockout. So, but we'll give that pay per view initial thoughts. We want to see it because we know Bell, you will get iced. Right after that one. 
Um, white v Chisora 2. White versus Chisora 2. Initially, no, but it delivered, didn't it? Yeah, delivered, definitely delivered a, a decisive ending. But initially, what did you think of Liberty? I wasn't happy about that being uh, a pay-per-view, and it didn't have a strong card to support it either. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, after that one... Joshua V. Ruiz. No, I might have been that one, the first one. No, no, no. Everybody, we all said, Jesus, this is a mismatch, didn't we? The initial yeah. thoughts were no. Okay, then after that one... Um, Dillian White versus Oscar Rivas. No chance. No chance of having that on the paper. You know, it wasn't a bad fight, but no, not having that yeah, one. And, and that, that was a sort of iced spilker. Go on then, what after that? Lomachenko versus Campbell. Lomachenko Campbell? Yeah. No, I'm not having that either. I don't know, it's Loma, isn't it, though? Two gold medalists as well, isn't it? Am I being harsh there, Terry? Yeah. Uh, Could they be dropped to a ten of these pay per views and make me happy? Instead of twenty eight quid and twenty five quid. Yeah, no, I think I think for a tenner it's good value. Yeah, so we give that a half a one then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we give that a half. Okay, uh, Lomachenko. Sorry, after Lomachenko, Campbell. Taylor versus Progre. Taylor versus Progre. Yeah, that, yeah. You'd have to say that, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both guys had belts. Both guys were unbeaten, I think. So, yeah. That's another fight that Eddie Hearns now to do. Not like, like the McGregor one and Mayweather and the Mayweather Pacquiao and the, the Fury Klitschko and, and this one here. They're the other what fights that Eddie Hearns not they want his carry on, do they? They're on his watch yeah. and he's probably getting something out of it because he's got to deal with Sky, but he, he went up to do it and wasn't well, that. <laughs> I know, yeah. It's like other getting other people, pimping people out, isn't it? Okay, then, uh, after that one. Um, so I think this might be the best match in one of them, of them all. So this is KSI v Logan Paul 2. KSI versus Logan Paul. Is this where we're at in boxing, Terry? KSI versus Logan Paul! <laughs> That is not a pay per view. It's not even. How much did they charge for that? A tenner? Tenner. But it's three, you won't even pay a quid for it, would you? So we're not going to give that one. All right, then after that, after two YouTubes, I mean, is this where boxing's heading in the in the 20s? We had the roaring 20s 100 years ago, and now we've got this. We're still roaring. <sighs> KSI versus Logan Paul. Oh my God. Right, go on, and what after that? Uh, Ruiz versus Joshua 2. Ruiz versus Joshua 2. Yeah, you'd have to say that, wouldn't you? Pay per view. Yeah, yeah. We'll give him that one. We'll give him the Campbell Loma one as well, because it's Loma, isn't it? Go on, then. Yeah. Last one White versus Povetkin. White versus Povetkin. Not a chance. 41 year old. No, I'm not going to give that. So let's add it up then. And the next one's. Uh, White, Povetkin, and it all Joshua Pooler, but uh, but there's no book, so we'll, we'll add it on three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You're going to get fourteen initial thoughts that yeah, that's worth the money. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I'm going to give it thirteen, and that's out of thirty-four, isn't it? Uh, I wasn't even keeping count, but you know. We sound like proper company men right now, don't we? How do we sound like company men? We're just doing, doing uh, what, porky company men? <laughs> <laughs> We're just going through Eddie Hearns, 34 pay-per-views, 650 million or there or thereabouts, between 600 and 650 million, depending on how many lies you tell you. So they've squeezed over half a billion out of the British public over 10... 10 years, is it? 9, 10 years? 
of the 10 years have squeezed all that out of us and it works out at more than a million pound a week, doesn't it? One, what is it? 1.2 million a week for 10 years they've been taking off the British public in pay-per-view. But really, technically, when you look at these pay-per-view shows, initial thoughts on people are that ain't pay-per-view. Oh, that's pay-per-view. And it's, it's roughly 40%, isn't it? I don't know what that is in a... What's 40? You'll give it 14 out of 34. So 20 of them pay-per-views are garbage. Garbage. It's it's a weird one, Russ, for me. Because there was a bit where he seemed to get it right, if that makes sense. Yeah. So so you, you, had, a, you had a run of, what was it? It was Frotch Kessler, Frotch Groves, Frotch Groves 2, um, Skip Bell, you cleverly for a bit, Mayweather Pacquiao, and you get to, yeah, okay, that's okay. Yeah, you, then you go Quig Frampton, Joshua Martin, uh, you got Golovkin Brook, and you're like, okay, you got Bell, you hate one. And you're like, there's a bit there where I think Hearn was trying to deliver something you could call pay per view. And then there's, there's this point now where we're now looking at what's the bare minimum you have to do to call something pay per view. That's what annoys me the most, Porky, is that there's no effort. To, to make something pay-per-view like there was when, you know, Golovkin Brook and they pulled out all the stops, all the marketing was on point, all of that sort of stuff. Now it's just, well, either buy it or don't buy it. That's all. Now it's like he does numbers on IFL or he's funny on Twitter. That's embarrassing. And this yeah. is what's going to kill boxing. People aren't seeing it today, but this is what's going to kill boxing. Yeah, well, we've just been through 34, and if, and if anybody wants to, to watch, what, anybody watch it video, go through the lists again, what we've just spoke about, and judge it yourself. Rewind the tape and get a piece of paper and pen. Just mark it down and then look at it and go, hmm. You know what I mean? But I mean, who, who's in charge of the quality control? For example, when you have somebody... Somebody must all sit around a big desk. Somebody sits at one end of the big desk, somebody at the other, and all the suits in the middle. And somebody goes, I think we should have KSI versus Logan Paul. That'll be Eddie Hearn. And then Adam Smith, he sits there and he goes, hmm. Like the man from Del Monte, yeah. KSI, Logan Paul, two YouTubers. Never had a professional fight in their life or whatever. Yeah. It's like, do you remember back in the 70s, we had the Austin Allegro, didn't we? And it had a square steering wheel. Do you know what an Austin Allegro is? Yeah, just about. Yeah, well, they had a square steering wheel. Can you imagine the board meeting for quality control? He said, right then, <laughs> big pipe hanging out at mouth. Like that with pipe, not crack, no tobacco. Condor ready <laughs> rope. You need that. We're going to propose a square steering wheel on the Austin Allegro. And some other donor who's probably got a contract with steering wheel company's gone. Square. Yeah, I'll second that, Your Honor. Well, this is like Bean. He's gone. KSA <laughs> Logan Paul. Johnny? Johnny's nodded and Adam Smith's gone. Compelling, all action, Bertha, Rugged, Judah Ball. And that's that. And these guys do numbers on YouTube, but they can't fight for profit. No, do you know how it works, right? No, no. So how it works essentially is Sky, Sky have data, right? So they'll go, okay, when Joshua fights, how many pay-per-views are there? Okay. When Bellew yeah. fights, how many pay-per-views does he do? Um, so here are the guys we can put pay-per-view on and they ring fence them, right? And they go, right, we can put these guys in with anyone. It doesn't seem to change the number of pay-per-view buys. That's the problem they have. They've got data to show fans will buy Joshua fighting anyone, right? It doesn't matter who he fights. Yeah. And because of that, they, don't, they have no incentive to make hard fights for Joshua because it doesn't add to their profit. Mm. Yeah, I see, what, I see what you mean. It's like this, Russ. Yeah, let's say, for example, let's say you've got a, a 2011 
Audi RS6, right? The state. Yeah. Now, now, if that's going to go for thirty-five grand, for example, Russ. That's what two thousand and eleven. It won't be worth that much. Oh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but go on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine yeah. years old. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. If, if, say if for that instance, be... yeah, you're saying that. Yeah. That, yeah. Let's say for instance, two hundred grand that... car brand new, Terry. It's a what? It's a hundred thousand pound car brand new. Yeah. So you're looking at that. Let's just say that's that's thirty grand, right? Yeah. Thirty grand. Now, if I change the black leather for blue leather, it still goes for thirty grand. So why am I going to waste my time making it look better? It doesn't why matter. Why are you going right? to spend? Why are you going to spend two, or three grand on it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and so that's what they'll say. So they'll say, look, if Joshua, if Joshua can do one point one million views or pay per views, fighting Parker, and he can do one point two pay million pay per views, fighting Fury. Oh, fuck it, take the Parker fight. The Fury fight can wait because we can keep doing this until we're forced to fight Fury. And that's what's happening at the moment. Yeah. So basically, there's conning public, aren't they? Well, the public are allowing themselves to be con. Like, if you don't want to, just, just literally stop buying pay per views and you will see that these big fights will happen in no time at all. Well, this is what we've been saying for years. If the fans vote with the feet, they'll start delivering the Fury against Joshua trilogy that we want. We want a trilogy or at least two fights. We want Wilder Joshua, right? We want Dylan White Joshua rematch, although <clears throat> it's lost a bit of sparkle now, hasn't it? Because now that they've both been iced. And we want Fury against Dylan White. We want these fights, but we're not going to get them while we keep giving them uh, what they want, you know, giving them paying for these garbage at the same. You know what I mean? There's 14 fights there that, yeah, you, you pay for it, but the other 20 has been just toshed. There's no quality control at Sky. There's too many Chiefs, not enough Indians. That's my own personal opinion. Yeah. But, uh, all right, then, moving on from pay per view, I don't want to sound like a bore because it just it gives me an ulcer. Right, moving on from pay-per-view then, let's go into... Has Al Heyman parked Tyson Fury up and is it heading for legal action? I was going to do a separate video on me on this, but I'd rather get your opinion on this while you're, while you're, uh, while you're on the channel, because you're a bit better than... You, you put it, word it a bit better than me, don't you? I just like to <laughs> handle. I'm the bad cop and you're the good cop. Right, what do you, do you think that it's all going to head, in, head into court this? Because I'm hearing whispers that lawyers are being drawn up and blah, 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 they're all on retainers. Heyman, Warren, Aaron, Fury's a bit pissed off. He's calling out wrestlers now. He just wants to make the most of his peak years, I suppose, doesn't he, after being in exile? Well, so here's the thing. Without crowds, those fights don't happen. I don't want to hear none of this. Joshua would fight Fury in Eddie's back garden. Nah, yeah. he would Right, you need you need full arenas for that. You need a full arena. I don't. I, I know it's the third fight, and I know how the second fight ended. But you need a full arena for Fury versus Wilder. None of that looks likely to happen this year, anyway. So why you'd go? Why you'd resort to legal actions beyond me? Uh, it, it's. It, I think it's just negotiating tactics, really, yeah. isn't it? Just, and, and while Wilder being smart is saying, well, this is giving me time to heal physically and emotionally. Yeah. Or I have to fight him again, but now we're both going to suffer from inactivity anyway. So there's no there's no disadvantage for Wilder for letting this drag out. To be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, I see what I see what you mean, mate. Do you think that Wilder's got an injury? I mean, Johnny Nelson's calling it calling it. Uh... Johnny's calling it bullshit. Uh, but would he be saying the same thing if Joshua had an injury? Well, not not if you wanted to stay doing pay per views, but yeah. hmm. I think it, for me, I'm sure I'm sure Wilder's had niggling injuries for a while. So, like I've said to all, all the boxers I know, then I've spoken to over the lockdown. I've said, forget the training for a few months, just let the body heal up, right? After all the years of abuse, let the body heal up, and the smart boxers are doing that now. They're just healing up and realizing that actually this might help prolong their career. And hopefully Wilder's doing the same thing. He's just letting his body heal up. He's enjoying time with his family, just reinvesting back in his own, you know, his own happiness. And then 
look, when when boxing's ready for a fight of that magnitude, we'll let it happen. Do you feel, Terry, that uh, Tyson Fury wants to fight somebody else, but they can't because of the contract? Nah, not necessarily. Look, they could cut a deal for... Deontay's already said this. I will step aside for this many million, but I fight the winner of Fury versus Joshua. Yeah. Now, the problem isn't Deontay Wilder. The problem now is Eddie Hearn, because Eddie's like, well, why do I want to fight Wilder? And it's like, well, no. Why? The fans want Joshua to fight Wilder at some point. This solves everyone's problem. Eddie's always the blocker in this. Now, I know a couple of guys who have dealt with Al Heyman and Al Heyman's team. Heyman just looks at the number and he goes, I think this is a fair number for what they're asking. Do you want yeah. to do it, yes or no? He, Heyman doesn't play games. He really doesn't play games because he's about making sure his fighters make money. Bob's yeah. a bit of a game player, but Bob will get a deal done. Yeah. It's Eddie that's the blocker in all of this because yeah. Eddie knows there are two opportunities for his cash cow to get absolutely blown away. And mm -hmm. then that's the end of him in boxing. Yeah, if Joshua gets blown away and he walks, where does it leave Eddie Hearn? Uh, he's, not looking at Bill star, he? he's not got a pay for you star, has he? Other than Joshua. Mate, he'll come on your channel. If he loses Joshua, he'll be straight on your channel. I won't even have him on now, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> over it. <laughs> 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 he knows I'd torture him if you come on here. He knows that. That's why he swerves me. Uh, I'd enjoy that. That that would be that would be pay per view. Yeah, I had to put a billboard up. Didn't we, Eddie? We a little todger. I had to go flop out. <laughs> so I had to get into my whiskey jar at home, empty all my coppers out, from get a big billboard put up somewhere on Peniston Road, Sheffield. Eddie there, with his foot on a stool like that, a uh, little mini me hanging down. <laughs> But now Eddie, Eddie's had his chance to come on, to come on, to come and see Big P. But have you noticed how if anybody puts him under pressure like them American guys, they just don't give it airtime, do they? Which is the right thing to do. Dennis wants that. To me. Dennis, look at Eddie. He's not even answering that bloke's question, Dennis, because I won. <laughs> <laughs> I I once. I swear to him. How are you doing, Dennis? All right. Got some bubbling. All right. Got, got some at bubbling, Dennis. Bring on a ticket deal. <laughs> Plus, ask him if he'll take a ticket deal. <laughs> we love Den, really, don't we, Den? Oh, great man. What, what a top bloke Dennis is. Yeah, well, he's got a lot of patience with me, hasn't he? Because I have tested him, I don't know, the last six years. Oh, my God. I took him to edge. <laughs> right. Uh, moving on, then. Sky Bias. Is he out of control? Mate, they're all salesmen. Like, everyone expects them to be pundits. Guys like Johnny, Spencer Oliver, all these sort, you know, all that little mafia. They're salesmen. That's what they are. And the reason that this... Go on. Here's why they're salesmen, Russ. Their income depends on these sorts of events carrying on. Mm. So their only incentive is to make sure that they can come back to the next one. So... You wanting them to be honest, but if you want honest punditry, get Glenn McCrory back. Do you know what I mean? What do you think? Uh, who, who do you think is the best one out of that bunch at the moment who doesn't who, who goes against the grain? Who would you say doesn't go off the script? Uh, Sir Cobra of Froch. Do you think that's why he's not been on? Because they haven't had him on for a long time now, have they? Well, they said well. Well, it's partly that and partly the fact that I revealed that Eubank Jr. would have spanked him silly. But if I'm being honest with you, I think the Joshua comments have probably landed badly with Team Joshua. And so they've just said to Sky, you know, Carl Froch can't work on, on this platform anymore. You mean anymore. Carl Froch's interview on IFL where he said that Joshua hasn't shown him much since he got knocked out by a fat Mexican? Actually, do you know what? I'll be honest with you. I'm surprised Coogan put that out. Now, that's the sort of thing where if you know the politics of the situation, I'd have yeah. said, Carl, are you sure you want me to put this out? And maybe Carl says, actually, you know what, take a couple of those sentences out and we're cool. Maybe Carl didn't know that he was being filmed. You never know, do you? Yeah, but there's a camera in his face. What did he think the camera was there for? Yeah. 
Maybe. Maybe, but... But it is, it's, it's sneaky behaviour. It's the sort of thing that someone like Danny Connor would do and he'd think it was funny. Good old Danny Connor. How are you doing, Danny? Hope you're well. When you Good. Find him, oh. Nah, never. He's, he's done, man. You know, when I, when I see him next time, he'll definitely be done then. Ah, oh, we have to wish him all well, these boxers, because it's an hard job they're in. Uh, I think that's about it, really. We've covered everything. Oh, I just want to touch on Fraser Clark and Dennis McCann. Fraser Clark, as he's stayed in the GB setup too long, he's been there 12 years now and still not looking like he's going to go pro when he's approaching 30. Has he been there too long? Do you know, I don't think, I don't think Fraser cares about being pro. Mm. I think what's happened with Fraser is he's got to see everyone turn over. Think about it. He's got to see a load of his mates or ex-opponents turn over. Yeah. And he's probably gone, apart from Joshua, they all seem to have miserable lives. So, what's the point? Mm. All right, then. And Dennis McCann, is, is he as good as what I make out? Because I put a video out. They all do a, a thousand views in 12 hours. I put what Dennis McCann one out. He doesn't do half as much. And it's like nobody cares, but... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like on the Viterbi, I were on the Frock type train, with the Paul Smith hype train, the Viterbi yeah. hype train, I'm on the Dennis McCann hype train now. We'll, we'll talk about that Paul Smith hype train in another episode. Hey, listen, I tipped Paul Smith to win a world title, if you remember, and obviously it didn't work ah, out. Ah, mate, but... mate, 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 delete your channel, but based on that, delete your channel. <laughs> I would have part casual then, though. But no, I just, I, I seen him box as an amateur. I thought he was really good, mate. And people were saying at, on that night he boxed, uh, when he turns pro, he'll go all way. And I, and I saw well, Oh, just because he beat Pascal? In the, no, he in got the beat Commonwealth. against Pascal. He was just an amateur look? show I went to before the Commonwealth Games. And uh, Paul Smith did well. And I thought uh, he'll go all way. And people were saying he wore a crowd and that. And I just thought, I'll follow him. And I wanted him to do well, probably because I went to the show and I were a bit naive to it all then and it didn't work out for him but I was on the frock type train Paul Smith Arthur Viterbi or Beater whatever they call him Dennis McCann it's very rare that I get on an hype train Dennis McCann I like him what do you think Terry? So I speak to his training team regularly because obviously they're mates yeah. and they Is that Alan Smith? Al Smith Eddie Lamb and the guys yeah, yeah. They, they say he's special and and Eddie's not a guy to like. Eddie doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't try and con anyone. Like he'll tell you what he thinks, and he's just like, "Nah, McCann. McCann's mm -hmm. as real as they come." So, and and he he does it in that way where he'll make you a believer. Where you're like, "Oh, okay, yeah." But he's just saying, "Look, Doug McCann's sparring people. They haven't got an answer to him." And remember, he hasn't even filled out yet. He hasn't matured physically. He hasn't matured emotionally. There's still a lot he can do boxing-wise. So he's not even tapping into what he's potentially capable of yet. But he's still... Yeah. Oh. But that's what... And the thing I like that I hear about him is he's never out the gym. And yeah. I always say to young fighters, look, the first five or six years of your career, you shouldn't be out of the gym. It's your job. Yeah. It is your job. Just keep... Stay, stay in that gym and that's how you do it. And then when you get to a certain level... You don't have to be in there as often. Yeah. So we're going to tip him to win a world title, Dennis McCann, then, yeah? I think so. Yeah. And do you think Frank Warren will bring him on slowly? Frank, Frank's good at making sure that once you get to world level, you stay there. All right, then. Well, if Frank's good at bringing him on, why is he putting Dubois in with Frankenstein, then? Big Joe Joyce. Why is he doing that? Because I'm sure... Team Dubois think it's an easy fight. And I'm not surprised by that. I think the fight's easier for Dubois than people give him credit for. Yeah. Yeah. Does Dubois beat Frankenstein? I think so. Do you? Yeah. Why? Too young, too fresh? Well, he, listen, <laughs> too accurate. Best jab in heavyweight boxing since since Larry Holmes maybe Sam Jones don't agree he thinks that Joe Ice has even drowned him late on right Sam Jones would say that Sam Jones has never been hit by a Dubois jab 
like what what whatever stamina you have, that jab will punch it out of you inside of three rounds. I'm sure Gorman thought he'd go late into the fight, and Gorman's got a boxing brain. Remember this. Mm-hmm. Gorman's actually a real. He's a real boxer. Because people have to understand, right? Here's what happened with Joe Joyce. Joe walked into Earlsfield Boxing Club as a grown man, right? And he didn't look that impressive early on in his career. So, ah, who is this guy? Who is this guy? They just threw him in the ABAs on a whim, right? And something just clicked in Joe. And he was able to just steamroller people. And that's how it happened. Like, Joe's not a, he's not a great technician. He's not a great boxing mind. He's none of these things. But Dubois is. Dubois is a boxing computer. That's what people don't realize. He, you know, he'll go to the body. He'll go to the... He'll set you up. Like, he will just... You will be surprised at the performance Dubois does against Joyce. That's all I'm going to say. A lot of people are gauging this fight based on what Daniel's done in his previous fights. Wrong way to do it. Like, you got to gauge it based on how good he was as a kid when he was fighting guys who were meant to be bigger, stronger, and better than him, and he was icing them. Yeah. Do you think that in about four or five years, uh, the baton will be passed from Tyson Fury to Triple D, Daniel Dubois? Uh, yes, and I hope it will mark a different era in heavyweight boxing where, where our heavyweights are between 6'3 and 6'5", and they've got some skill and some athleticism, and like we don't want these big freaks with the weird wingspan and stuff. I just I want heavyweight boxing to go back to what it was, just mm. two hard men going at it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and simple. Good man. All right then. Well, been emotional, Terry. Do you, no no Hennessy chat today? No what? No Hennessy chat. Oh sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thought, thought we forgot, yeah. I forgot forgot all about it. Uh, right, the Mick Hennessy show. We'll finish off with the Mick Hennessy show. Right. Uh, super middleweight, Virgo, 6 and 0 in a draw against Williams, no, and 7 and 0. Thought Virgo was a disgrace for throwing water on the guy in the build up. But I think, to be honest with you, I think that was set up. And either both guys or one of those guys was in on it from the start. I don't know who, but I think we need to move away from that sort of corny, fake hype sort of thing. It just. It just doesn't sit well with me. Yeah, they tried to copy some of Eddie Hearn's uh, pantomime antics, didn't they? Uh, well to eight, McKenna four and zero against Maguire one and sixteen. I mean, first round KO won it for him. Yeah, it's not not much. There. Look, I didn't watch much of the show because I was only interested in Isaac Chamberlain, to be honest with you. Yeah. So I was kind of just jumping in and out of that seconds out feed, but. I mean, Hennessy's still building his stables. I guess you're going to get this kind of filler in the short term while they figure out, you know, what the real lineup is. So, Virgo won by knockout, didn't he, yeah? No, I think it went away. It went away? Yeah, 40-36 to Virgo. He didn't stop him. Oh, he went four rounds with that one. Yeah. Yeah, I know McKenna won a knockout, won it, round one. Uh, middleweight, Mick Hennessy Jr., 4 and 0 in a draw. Got beat on points over six rounds against the guy in the second fight. I feel sorry for Michael Hennessy Jr. because I've got a soft spot for him. I met him, at, uh, I met him a few times on Fox Program, but I got a chance to sit uh, and have a bit of... I didn't eat much. Have a chat with him and Buncey and Mick at Peter Pugh's 50th in Bolton. And he seemed a nice kid. Yeah, he boxed one of my lads a few years ago when he was in the amateurs. Mick's been really throwing nice him in deep, you know, with sparring. Yeah. Well, well, you have to, right? Because you're Hennessy's kid, so you've got to be able to prove that you've got a degree of toughness to you. Yeah. That, obviously, because they're going to up the game because it's Mick's kid. They want to impress Mick, don't they? Yeah. Uh, so I feel sorry for him. What is he? Four and one and, and, and four wins, one loss, one draw. Uh, I don't know what, what, what for him now. Maybe... Maybe you were match. We can't. We can't see we're matched hard, can we? Against a kid in his second fight. Nah, let him carry on. But uh, the last like two novices won't be fighting anyway, won't they? So I don't know. I think they'll move forward with him. Make up keep. Yeah. Him look, on look. Guy. Danny Connor drew his first fight, lost his next three. You know, he still had a reasonable career. There's always hope. Did Danny Danny Connor won a, a belt, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Soft. He did, didn't he? Soft. 
making though, but yeah. Well, that, well that, we have to give him credit for that, don't we? Ah, uh, not necessarily. I think if you win an area level belt, it just shows that you're capable of making a living as a boxer. That's all. Okay. Uh, Cruiserweight, you like this kid? Isaac Chamberlain. <laughs> Against Sen. Five, ele- <laughs> Isaac, what, 11 wins or something he had? Against yeah. Sen, five and two. Isaac knocked him out in the round. Ah, uh, mate, do you, I don't know if you saw the finish to that, but there were some of the most savage uppercuts I've seen. Like the guy's head was literally just snapping back. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he broke his neck. Why didn't he do that against the Coley? Uh, because the Coley's six foot six and a half. Six foot six and a half, is he? Yeah. Jesus, that's a long finish. And he's got a long arm. Oh, cut him now. He's. And, and then we move on to the uh, the main event of the evening. Super featherweight, Ziani against Dil Magani. TKO in 12th. So, a uh, mixed guy got beat in 12th round. Yeah, fourth for the European title. Yeah. Good fight. Reasonable amount of back and forth. But I think this, sometimes it's about levels, right? You and think some- Alex is out his depth out to, uh, after British level? No, I think sometimes you've just got to get tested. And he needed it. You normally get a test like this earlier in your career. Maybe it's just a test he needed now, and then he's got to come back from it. Do you think that he would overmatch Teddy fighting a kid 31 and 3? You can't be overmatched if you get stopped in the 12th, Paul. Do you see what I mean? No. It's a competitive fight. If you get to the yeah. 12th, there's not that much between you. Yeah. Yeah. On the whole, what would you give the show? Uh, free to wear TV, uh, compelling fire, give it a seven out of ten. Yeah, I was gonna say a seven and a half, but I'm a Hennessy man, aren't I? Yeah, but you know, here's one thing I'm gonna give you credit for when everyone else, including me, was saying Hennessy's finished now, this is Hennessy done with boxing. You're the one guy that said, No, 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 not yet. Hennessy will be back. You were the one voice that was saying that. Yeah, I, and you know why? Because I've actually spent a bit of time with Mick and been out for meals with Mick and blah, blah, blah. And he's a nice guy. He's boxing through and through. He's not into all that after-show party stuff and glamour. He, he, you know, them after-show parties, they're just, oh, you've got women running around with trout pouts, fake knockers and and just people exchanging your phone numbers. It's so fake. Uh, and I, I'm not keen on going to them myself now. Mick's not into all that carry on where people are trying to pull fast ones and tap people up and all that. He's not into all that. He's boxing, mate. He's not into all that. I'll get you a commercial deal and this and that. Mick does what he says on Tim, boxing. He's the guy that finds kids in amateurs and gets them to turn pro and he's boxing. And I said he'd be back and he's back bigger than ever. Well, he's back on Channel 5 and he, um, he, he has put a bit of weight on and I'm a bit worried about Mick weight at the moment because maybe he's been depressed I don't know he has got a big appetite but Mick if you're watching and I know you are I've got a phone number for you he's called uh his name now <laughs> who did my gastric band but uh Richard Summer he's at Claremont in Sheffield at Broom Mill and uh you can I'll, I'll put you in touch with Mick seven bags now he's gonna save on takeaways uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, if you like a couple of shakes a day and a, and a fisherman's pie at night with a bit of mushed up veg, uh, you, you'll be all right. But uh, but yeah, uh, Mick, give me a ring if you're interested in it. It'll save your life like it saved mine. Well, we're 28 stone, you know, 15 now. Two stone to go. But I like Mick, and he's a boxing man, and I hope he does well, and I hope he lives till he's under. Peter Fury loves him. We get on with him. He's a good boxing man. Some people that I know, they fell out, I fell out with Mick, and it's a shame, but we can't like we can't like and love everybody, can we? Nah. So, so that brings us to the to an end of a ninety minutes, nearly ninety minute super blast. Wait, uh, when are we going to get it back down to 30 minutes, Porky? <laughs> I know, yeah, well, we, we can't let it go, can we? There's a lot of people that like these long ones, and there's a lot of people that 
like I'm sure. So I'm playing about with, with analytics and we're having a look and we, I'm doing a study of all people who watch. I know when they click off and when they stay on and we're just trying to time it right. It's, you know, it's my little baby and I'm trying to learn on the job. There's nobody giving me any advice, but we're doing our best here at Porky's Corner and hoping to bring out better content. content. It's like Adam Smith when they put it on him and we strive to be better. Well, well, I don't say strive, I just say, look, I'm doing my best. If you don't like it, fuck off. It's as simple as that. I'm not here to make any more mates. I've got enough mates. 400 people in the phone. I don't need any more mates. We're just here to call the bullshit and correct a few things and give our opinion. We're not out there breaking the law, are we? So... I've enjoyed it. You've been very yeah. forthright in your views. <laughs> uh, should Cash Alley fight Dave Allen next? I don't see why not. Like, makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, little whispers that it could be in pipeline. So mm -hmm. maybe not next. Maybe it's time after the Cash is in mix to fight Dave Allen. We've been told. So I wish Cash well. And then lives over here. So a cricket ball there, or two cricket balls. So I wish Cash Alley well against Dave Allen if it happens September or December. Should Dave Allen fight Babbitt next or Tom Little? I think Tom Little. I think that's a I fight. Do. Tom Little's a good fight. He just never it seems to get a full camping. Tom Little will be a good camp and sparring. He's a dangerous animal at English level, at that level. At yeah, exactly. Level. Instead of throwing him in with Olympians, it's no good. And Team GB lad, I wish Tom Little all the best. I wish Dave Allen all the best. But Dave needs to get his head out of clouds. He's talking Jolly Robbins. But I spoke to Peter Fury. I worked at Peter Fury's last week, and we're not going to let him fight you with Dave, no matter what they're saying. Eddie might be talking it up and Dave, but no. We messed him about three times now, Annie Yui. So that boat has sailed for Dave. So it's going to be Babic or Tom Little, I think, for or Cash Alley for Dave Allen. Exciting times ahead, Johnny. This is why we love this sport so much. <laughs> Rough, tough, rugged. All I'm going to say to Bean is, where's the bodies, Barry Bean? <laughs> Hand over your laptop, Bean. <laughs> All right, then, tell well, listen, I'm going to let you get back to what you're doing. I'm going, right, to, mate. I'm going to go downstairs now and do a little, I'm going to do a Tom Platt's tricep workout. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> or a Mike Mensah tricep workout. <laughs> Old school. All right, tell you take care. God bless. All the best to you and your family, my friend, and have a great Same week. Same to you, mate. I hope the family are good. Remember, yeah. don't have nightmares. Oh, don't you have nightmares, Terry? You keep my one liner. <laughs> All right, cheers, pal. All right, thank you. Right. Right. And that was Terry Chopandama from London. I hope you're well, Terry. You take care. Peace out. Don't have nightmares, Terry. How do I turn the. Oh.